Hello, friends, and welcome to a very nerdy episode of Miss Shelved. I'm your host, Nicole Brinkley, ready to bring you another dose of bookstore love. For those of you who are new to the podcast, welcome. Every two weeks, I introduce you to an independent bookseller in conversation with an author they love. This week's bookseller is Abby Rice. Hi, my name is Abby Rice. I am a bookseller and buyer at the Briar Patch in Bangor, Maine. Abby has left the Briar Patch since our recording and now works for the great team at Foggy Pine Books in Boone, North Carolina. I've been friends with Abby for years now. You'll hear them mention it in the podcast. They're so passionate about books and about community. They're in conversation today with the delightful Whitney Gardner. I'm Whitney Gardner. I am an author and illustrator. Settle in as these two do a deep dive on one of my personal favorite topics, tabletop roleplay games like Dungeons and Dragons. Whitney, I'm so excited about this. Abby! <laughs> okay, I have been wanting to just basically bombard you with questions about one of our mutual shared interests, Dungeons and Dragons, for like as long as I've quote unquote known you on the internet. So this is this is gonna be awesome. How are you? Incredible, amazing. <laughs> Love to talk Dungeons and Dragons all day, every day. Let's do it. We're such nerds. And I know before this we were talking, we we're just like, how how do you human? How do you have conversation now? <laughs> so I first found you on the internet because you wrote a book that does heavily feature Dungeons and Dragons called Chaotic Good and I uh -huh. loved it. Do you want to talk about that for a second or do you want to just... Sure. Yeah. Chaotic Good, an alignment in Dungeons and Dragons, and also the title of one of my books is about that feeling that I used to get when I would go into a gaming store or comic shop and I'd be the only girl in there. And you get all sorts of unwanted uh, attention being the only girl in the comic shop. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a lecherous, leering look that you get from people. And other times it's the, what are you doing here? You don't belong. And so that's sort of the feeling I was trying to capture with that book. And I had to talk about a lot of Dungeons and Dragons because that was my game in high school. And I never found any other girls who were playing it. It's amazing how much that's kind of changed in the last few years. Cause I remember it being like that when I first started getting into geek and stuff like that like my, the first time I bought this dice was 10 years ago yeah oh my god I mean I was like 13 years old 14 years old and I was like learning about D&D &D and like getting into it and my mom had to sit me down and say like Whitney I've been talking to your aunts I'm talking to some ladies at work and they're worried about this Dungeons and Dragons that you're playing like I was coming Yes, I was coming up in D&D when people were still sort of thinking that this was a satanic thing. And I had to sit my mom down and say like, mom, this is the dorkiest thing you can imagine. Trust me, it has nothing to do with Satan, okay? <laughs> but yeah, it has changed a lot. Like it's so much more mainstream and it's wonderful and so much more accessible now. Oh yeah, and I just, I loved, I loved reading about that in Chaotic Good because it was just like this gatekeeping that I think so many people luckily don't have to experience now, but also can just relate to because people, so many people, women, queer folks, non-binary folks, people of color, like it's, there's always that little of jumping into a new fandom because you're like what if they don't want me yeah uh, but it's 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 getting better and we love that i so know it's i'm so happy like, i if no one ever has to experience that again i'm thrilled i don't want anyone to have to like run the gauntlet just because i ran the gauntlet you know yeah. like thank gosh i'm so glad everybody is more welcomed absolutely so you said you so a little bit of background dungeons and dragons for those who haven't caught up to it or are unfamiliar it's a tabletop role-playing game where basically a bunch of folks sit around and collaborative storytelling right as mm -hmm. as engineered by dice usually there is a person called the dungeon master the game master the dm or gm who facilitates the telling of the story and declares if you wish to do this thing you may roll a die and then certain numbers are added based on things but like it's a heckin good time it's really great to just shut out the world for a few hours and tell a story with your friends it's so fun so you said you've been playing how long have you been playing D D and other games so i was big into D D in high school and then some in college i did larp in college for a little <gasps> while 
Oh my God. I, I, you know, I'm admitting it freely now, although I'm I have so... not always, although I did have a lot of fun. LARPing, for the, if you are unfamiliar with D&D, you might also be unfamiliar with LARPing, which is live action role playing. You take the table away and you run around and hit each other with a bunch of foam swords. It's probably the dorkiest thing I've ever done. But it was a good time. I mean, who hasn't want to run around the woods and like pretend to be Legolas? Let's be real. Basically, yeah. But then there's a big drop off where like I became an adult and I had a job and I had less free time and everybody had scheduling issues and who could get together and who couldn't. And it wasn't until recently that I've been able to really pick it up again because now everyone's cool with running their games through Google Hangouts or through Roll20 and playing on virtual tables, which is, I think, a great way to play and much better for everybody's schedules. Mm -hmm. so, so now I've been able to play again, and I'm just so happy to be back in the world of Dungeons and Dragons and telling stories with the people I love. Yeah. Are you, are you a DM or do you play? I I am a DM. I do run the game for my friends and my husband, which is an interesting way to tell stories and not have to worry about what is my editor going to think? What is my agent going to think? Is it going to get bad reviews? Who cares? Because <laughs> nobody gets to hear it except for these three people and they all love me and I love them. And it doesn't matter if it's any good in the traditional sense. We're all just having fun. It's so, so... It's such a different relationship that you have with these friends, like, once you start having these adventures. Because it's like having a shared memory of, like, yeah, remember that time we were <laughs> in a cave and then two banshees and a bunch of undead showed up and almost killed us all? True story. Happened, like, two weeks ago. But we're, like, talking about this, like, we all actually experienced it together in person and stuff. It's so good. I love it so much. It's really interesting to see the kinds of people that are, like, that, like, gravitate towards d and I actually started playing, it was about 10 years ago. I was working at a corporate bookstore. I was working at a Barnes and Noble and one of the other people that worked with me was like, I used to do this thing on snow days with my family. We would just sit around and roll dice and I missed that and I'm going to set up a game and you're all going to join me. And I was like, what the heck? And it was, she started like pulling out all of these books and it was like, we were actually playing Pathfinder, which is another game similar to D&D, &D, but mm -hmm. had, a, had a lot more going on with it at the time because this was first edition Pathfinder and there was all of these like compendium stories oh it was so like number crunchy and so our first game we sit down and i'm like i'm i'm playing this wizard i don't understand how spells work and i think i'm freaking out a bit because this is a level of social activity i wasn't expecting but then you come out of that game and like you fight your first boss and you're telling the story and everybody's just laughing and eating snacks and stuff and you just you get hooked you get hooked real I think fast that's like I think that's a one reason why authors, I've seen more and more authors on Twitter everywhere, like getting drawn into the world of D&D &D lately, because it's just a way to tell stories without that pressure. Mm -hmm. And everyone is just having a fun time. I don't walk away worried like, oh, what did they think? It, it's a game, you know, and a fun way to tell a story. Oh, yeah. And I think... Yeah, there's specifically like an author, it's qu it's called an actual play thing, for those who don't know. It's like basically you can sit down and listen to somebody else's game or watch it on Twitch. And forgive me for not knowing it off the top of my head, I think it's like Spellbound or Spellcast. A couple of authors who've been on this podcast before are on it. And it's just the coolest mm -hmm. thing. Like book people gravitate towards d and I think. And other, I mean, it's storytelling for one thing, but I've played many a game with other booksellers. I don't know if you've played with other book book humans. I've played with some cartoonist humans in a like a one shot three episode game for a podcast. And I was a player in that game. And the people who play with me now, some but one is a writer, one is a programmer, one is a video game developer. So it's all a whole gamut of people. It's one of my groups is because I'm in multiple games because I'm that much of a nerd. The main group I play in, we've got like a lawyer, we've got college professors people in coding like it's just all of these people who like they're nine to five are very suit and tie and then they come home and we're like well then you gotta come home and slay a dragon exactly like <laughs> oh it's so good it's just like the, the accessibility i just love it so much now like we said it's a different world and i think you mentioned this before but i think quarantine has kind of changed how D, &D happens now too because we're all craving like 
the connection and Zoom and Google Hangouts and things like Roll20 and D&D Beyond have made it so much easier. Yeah. Oh, so I was going to ask, one of the things that people like to joke about with D&D is dice, dice hoarding. So basically... D&D is played with dice. Like, you sit there, you roll to see if you can scale a wall, you roll to see if your attacks hit, you roll to see if you can convince somebody to do something with a persuasion check. So people tend to accumulate these dice. I have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) Are you a person who collects dice? Some people prefer to, like, roll them digitally. Is that a thing you do? I do have, I have three sets of dice. Two, like, very nice wooden cases for two sets of these dice. I don't, I haven't like dice hoarded because, you know, three sets is hardly a hoard. One is an extremely crazy, beautiful, like holographic purple set of dice from like a Kickstarter. And the rest are sort of like your regular comic shop D&D dice. You're going to have to send Uh, me pictures of these later because I want to see the sparkly purple set. Oh, absolutely. I have so many like glamour shots of these. I'm just like, oh, my beautiful dice. Other games I have rolled digital dice. It doesn't really bother me all that much because we just wanted to everybody roll in front of each other i guess it's like sometimes fun that way to see exactly the numbers that come up i went down a rabbit hole real deep for a few years where it was just like my online shopping was just dice because i discovered the world of quote unquote luxury dice which are basically non-plastic or resin sets that are like above ten dollars and i have like a solid brass t20 i got an aluminum set for more money than i'm gonna say it's like just they become like these little collector's pieces and you kind of remember Mm -hmm. where you were when you got them and like oh i was at this convention when i got this purple set and then this i feel like if quarantine didn't happen i would be like so i would be dice rich right now but i think maybe my bank account has been saved because i haven't been going out to non-essential shops for a year so it's Mm -hmm. just like oh the dice i have and these really precious dice that came to me in the mail through kickstarter i'm gonna i'm gonna drag my girlfriend for a second because i recently got her into critical role which i'm sure we will talk about in a moment which is (laughs) basically a bunch of nerdy ass voice actors sitting around and playing dungeons and dragons it is incredible it is i think well over a thousand hours of content at this point and she's been watching through it and has actually started playing dungeons and dragons because of it and she has accumulated dice like a dragon she's very excited (laughs) about them and i just it's so much fun to watch people like get a new set of dice and then show them off and then other people show them off it brings people together yeah it's a thing that like it's a very universal gaming experience is just dice and tokens and accumulating books there's a lot of actually actually there's a lot of books coming out about D or related to it as it hits the mainstream like another actual play thing the the adventure zone or taz or taz or however you call it they have graphic <laughs> novels now i know love them i have them all I I have only just started listening to it. I think I'm through the, is it the third? I don't know if they qualified as seasons arc of it. Yeah, they call them arcs. I'm like halfway through the one they call Petals to the Metal, which Mm -hmm. is great and like very Mad Maxi. And so I can't wait to actually go back and read the graphic novel that is apparently based on it. Yeah, I have an arc for their first graphic novel. And that's like my little like coveted, like, ooh, I got it first. I use the Adventure Zone to get through drawing and coloring all of Fake Blood, just like I have just used Critical Role season two or campaign two to get through all of drawing and coloring long distance. So these live podcasts or live play or recorded podcasts of other people's Dungeons and Dragons campaigns have gotten me through a lot of labor intensive bookmaking. I have Abby to thank for watching Critical Role. I I had put it off for so long because it looked like such an endeavor, but I didn't realize just how much work I had in front of me anyway. And it was like I had friends with me cheering me on as I worked. And I also had my little group chat where I could scream about things happening in the campaign. It took a lot of the pain out of working. Can we talk about how absolutely wholesome the Critical Role people are? And, like, just how much they love each other. You mean the cast members? Yeah. I mean, also their characters, too. But (laughs) It's wonderful to watch a group of people, like, even when they're having squabbles in the game, you know that they still care about each other. 
whatever drama is happening on their table, you know that like, I don't know, they're all just in it to have a good time. And so I never put on an episode thinking like, oh no, what's going to happen? Like, I think about that in terms of the plot, but I know that like, no matter what, they'll like stick together Mm -hmm. (laughs) as a a group. Yeah, it's it's just, it's so nice to watch them and forget about things for a little bit and just be sucked into their story because they are all actors and professional voice actors you'll know some of them if you look up the cast list like from video games and anime and things like that they are like very big names in that scene and they just sit around and matt mercer the dm weaves this beautiful story with all of these voices and there is kind of this thing in D circles now called the matt mercer effect where some people will watch croco roll as their introduction to D and then get overwhelmed by the fact that they can't do it like as well as they do right because they fully embody their characters and things like that and i'm here to tell you now that if anybody watches Critical Role and thinks they can't get into D&D, that, that's incorrect. D&D is just a bunch of friends sitting around and making dumb jokes and playing games. It is silly. It doesn't have to be a big professional production. It's a good time. Do you have... So you mostly DM, you said. Yes. Do you have any favorite, like, story moments or characters that you've played to give people an idea of, like, what they could expect with a D&D character from a game? Well, we're playing a game right now. Our campaign is, like, an entirely homebrewed campaign, which means that I've come up with a story. I'm not using, like, a book as a guide. And basically, they have to go around and try the deck of many things, which is something in Dungeons (gasps) & Dragons has been separated, and they have to go around and find all the cards and, like, reunite them into one deck again. I wish you could see my face. I love that (laughs) idea so much. I might steal that for my own game please go ahead it's been a lot of fun they fought a lot of different weird enemies and things like that they are playing students that are like have left school to go accomplish this for their principal and one of the bosses that they had to fight was the computers in their computer lab their fantasy computer lab were going all haywire (laughs) and they got sucked into the computer by the warlock cliffy Oh my and God. they had to, <laughs> and he was trying to like overcorrect everybody's problems and they had to defeat Clippy. Oh my God. I love yeah. this. <laughs> I mean, Clippy is a big bad from the 90s, basically. So, yeah, yeah. Oh they had to like one of the levels in the compute they had to like do a snood puzzle and they were like in like this green rolling field with like a blue cloudless sky and like you know it's very much like windows based and like screensavers and then clippy shows up at the end oh my god and just you could have like a little mini game of the what is it encyclopedia the Encarta 96 like mind maze yes exactly oh my god that's brilliant (laughs) I love this so much oh that's so much fun and so is it set like in modern times it's not no it's not I mean it's set in what it's set in like uh Whitney's fantasy universe if I need there to be a computer my players just go with it you know uh if there's a robot they just kind of go with it we're all very just forgiving of each other (laughs) because you're just there to have fun right we're just there to have fun so it's not a very high fantasy serious campaign it's definitely more just like what goofy shenanigans can i throw at them this week i love that so i have three games right now that i play in regularly one switches out dms every week from a group and then one is on like tuesday nights because this is my hobby because I can't do anything else right now. But in one of the games I'm playing in, we are investigators. We are called the Grey Cloaks. And an arc we just finished was the Grey Cloak Games, which was basically like, for lack of a better analogy, the Triwizard Tournament, where we had to go through these different challenges against other Grey Cloak teams. And I think I accidentally derailed the game for an entire month because I made a crack about how there should be a team building brunch because obviously there is always a team building brunch at these things. So um, <laughs> I had to explain in D&D terms to an NPC and not a character that wasn't controlled by a player what waffles were and oh, then no. we had to reverse engineer a waffle maker and for some reason we didn't convey the size of it so they ended up making in the game a giant cast iron waffle maker that the dm somehow decided to turn into a mimic which is a monster that mimics other shapes and we had to fight a waffle maker so that's dungeons and dragons it's a very serious game 
<laughs> very serious. One of my players seems to be very interested in cooking and baking. She is this like half orc that's gotten into it. And in, there's a spell in D and D called Speak with the Dead. And so once I had her find a scroll and it taught her the spell Speak with Bread. <laughs> and now she can she can talk to bread and the bread will tell her the recipe to make the bread I in its own bready voice. I love this. There is a game that I ran because I like I don't like to DM so much as run like one shots and small campaigns because I don't have the attention span to run a full campaign. I like to introduce people to D&D. So uh, a game I played or I, that I ran for a short while that included the lovely Nicole Brinkley, host of this podcast. I believe we dubbed it Booksellers and Beasties. <laughs> the, the crew was gifted, I believe, a house. And I believe there were two entire sessions where the players just went around decorating the house, talking about how much brunch they make and people just like settling in. And there was like some adventure. There was some guys going missing and things like that. But like they just really wanted to role play settling the you house. You never know away. what's going to happen. Exactly. You never know. They had to set up their home base. There was a uh, one shot of somebody trying to figure out whether they slept in their armor or not. There was just all kinds of stuff. It was the best, but that was the game they wanted to play. I've also played in other games that are very, very combat heavy and very like number crunchy, I believe is the term, where it's just like, mm -hmm. I roll this many dice and I hit this thing for this many damage. Oh, it's so good. There's just like, there's something for everyone. I love it. Do you play any other kinds of games? I have run a Serenity game a long time ago, which was like a tabletop Firefly from He Who Shall Not Be Named. But other than that, I've stuck pretty firmly in Dungeons and Dragons in terms of tabletop. I have wanted to try and run a Monster of the Week game, but we'll see. A monster of the Week being the like tropey, the, the trope of there is a monster that shows up in the game every week, or is that an actual... Yeah, story? it's like, it's a system that you use to run a game like a, a Buffy or a Supernatural mm -hmm. or like a show where you know there's a monster and these people have to come together and fight it like you know that's awesome I'm gonna have to look that one up later because I always I love playing around with new systems there's a guy named Grant Howitt who makes mm -hmm. the one page RPGs and he basically he writes an entire gaming system and all the rules fit on one page so it's really simple to play and my personal favorite one is called honey heist yes i'm dot no i've never been in a honey heist game but i'm like someone please invite me to play in this game or i'm gonna have to run it myself whitney i will run a honey heist game for you like yes! I, will, I will pull together people I, I love, I love running Honey Heist. It's just, it's so much fun. Basically, if you don't know, it is a game that is played with two, like, six-sided Yahtzee dice, basically. You are bears. You are, you are tasked with getting honey. I forget what the quippy tagline is, but you're tasked with getting honey and you have to convince people that you are people. And there's just so many shenanigans that ensue, which is my favorite kind of game. But Grant's also put out a couple of other games. There's one called um, Crash Pandas, which is about drag racing raccoons. Oh my God. Yeah, right? I want to run that at some point, but that one's a little harder over Zoom. There's just so much good stuff out there. There's also like other gaming books you can buy that tie in with like 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. We just got one in at my store that's like, it's Neverland. It's basically, you you play on in Neverland. Like you meet with the Lost Boys and stuff like that. Like it's really cool. And it's made to be played with 5th edition rules. There's so many cool things that stores can carry and have. I love that. Most of the D&D &D books are orderable from your friendly local bookstore or game store. It's just, it's such a good time. They have like these starters. Get lists. Tasha's Cauldron of everything. Yes. I love that. We've, we sold out. We were like, are people going to want this when it came out? Because I knew I wanted it, but I can't always base what we get in the store on what I want, unfortunately. <laughs> but I was like, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is this really cool expansion that has all kinds of new rule sets and classes and things like that for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. It has just been so popular and so amazing and I've loved it so, so much. Um, it's nice I, to see a lady on the cover of a and d book. Not that she's the only one, but... I'm still all for it. I, I just, I love Tasha's entire everything. Tasha's Hideous Laughter is a spell in the game and it is one I use a lot. My tiefling bard loves to insult people and 
so hard that it causes damage. So she'll either mock them using the spell or make a really, really bad pun, which is my preferred way of doing things. Tasha's an icon. I love her. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I'm staring at my bookshelf right now, and it is amazing. How I know. Many- I'm looking at my books, and I'm saying, like, oh, what books could we talk about? <laughs> well, also, there's just, like, so... There are so many books that also tie into D&D, and, like, we talked about how Adventure Zone has a graphic novel now that you can buy. Critical mm-hmm. Role also has tie-in books as well like they have an entire line of graphic novels that are incredibly well done about like the history of the characters and things like that and they're all set before the campaign so you can get into them without actually knowing anything about the game itself which i love that it's so accessible and i love recommending it to like fantasy nerds who Mm -hmm. have read everything that's out there and it's like well here's this critical role thing i think the critical role books are for like the people who like high fantasy Mm -hmm. and are looking for their like wizards and spells and mm-hmm. barbarians and like all of that and then then the adventure zone would definitely be for your friends who are like into goofy stuff and breaking the rules and like more lighthearted and not so serious fantasy it is not even remotely serious like okay this doesn't have to do with D, but like it has that vibe this comic i just read called the wizard w-i-z-e-r-d and the potion of dreams Mm-hmm. It's a comic, but it's it's so funny and it's cute. It's middle grade ish, and it's about like a wizard, and there's all sorts of D and D type adventures in it. The drawings in it are so fun, and it's a very quick read, and I can't recommend it enough. There is also a book series, or well, there's two books in the series so far that I am going to get. A lot of people are going to laugh at me for this because, of course, Abby is talking about this book, but there are two books in the series so far from Tamsin Muir. The first one is called Gideon the Ninth, and I swear uh-huh. it is like a D&D campaign gone awry. It's basically about... Well, the tagline everybody knows is lesbian necromancers in space solving mysteries in a haunted castle, but like the mystery aspect of it, and you have all of these different people from different backgrounds and like different spellcasters and things like that, it really does feel like there is an entire magic system and game. You could you could do a D&D game set in this world, I swear to you. But it is also campy and weird and has these off-the-wall like references to nerd stuff and Tumblr memes, which like, of course, the anachronistic jokes are one of my favorite parts of D&D. But yeah, I I just, it's got so many of the same vibes and anybody who likes gaming, I really recommend you check out Gideon the Ninth. All right, well, that's that's a, that's an insta buy. <laughs> I can't believe I haven't persuaded you to buy this book. It's like add to cart. <laughs> oh, there's so many good books. And then like a lot of YA teen books have been tying in gaming and gaming conventions and stuff like that, you know, like in cosplay. Like your wonderful, book, your wonderful book, Chaotic Good. I know I, I just started Ryan LaSala's Bedazzled, which is set at a um, convention in Boston. It's so good. It's very focused on cosplay, which I love. I haven't come across any specific nerd references yet, but like to gaming, but I imagine they're in there because like conventions and gaming are so intertwined. Yeah. Sam Mags has that Conquest book, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I'm thinking. I haven't read that yet. That has been on my list for a long time. I'm trying to think. Oh, and then there's there are two middle grade books that have come out recently. Well, one came out last year called Homerooms and Hall Passes. One of my favorite middle grade books to come out in the last few years. It is basically about you have your adventuring party. You have a, a fighting dwarf. You have your sullen wizard mm-hmm. and rogue and all of these people. And they go out and they have their adventures. And then at the end of the day, they go back to the tavern and they play homerooms and hall passes where they pretend oh my goodness yeah, where they pretend to be middle schoolers and then they get sucked into their game no this is like a book that like you hear and you're like i need it and i'm jealous all at the same time right exactly like it's i mean you have it's such a thing to have like the oh yeah i play i'm playing this game and then i got sucked into it jumanji you've got the original Dungeons and Dragons cartoon was based on that, like your everyday person getting sucked into their game, but I've never seen it turned around like that. And it is the most, it is hysterically funny. Even if you don't understand like the D&D specific, you do know these fantasy adventure tropes. And you basically, you have like the dwarven fighter trying to be a middle schooler and realizing he can't go through his life just like hitting things with an axe. <laughs> um, it was great. I loved it so, so much. That one, and then there's another series that's just come out called Fart Quest. Which of is course. Right. Yeah, it's it's in that like illustrated novel vein of it is about 
it's been a little while since I've read my galley of this, but it's about a wizard's assistant and he's named, the wizard calls him Fart, but he has to basically go on this quest. And there's all these like little send ups to D&D. I think he actually references like leveling up a couple of times. I like it a lot too. And so it's really accessible to like kids who want to, who've seen people play D&D or are curious about it, but aren't necessarily like, I want to start playing it right now. Or even just kids who like, I really like fantasy adventure. Let's try this. Um, right. It's just, it's so cool. Like, I never would have thought of this stuff 10 years ago. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> is there a book universe that you would like to see a game set in? Is there a book universe that you would love to play a tabletop role-playing game in, like a D&D style adventure? Oh, this is a good question. Right off the top of my head, the first book I thought of is going to be crazy. Is this book, it's a younger reader graphic novel called bug boys <gasps> i love bug boys it's by laura netzger i just think it'd be so fun to have like a group of people get together and be like little bugs <laughs> and it's just so cute and so sweet and to be like i live under a mushroom or what i don't know what the the game would be but i think that it would be so cute to like play a game in that universe of bug boys i would live on a lily pad Absolutely. That would be so adorable. Oh my god. I, I mean, I'm trying to space battle lunchtime also could mm -hmm. be a good one. But that one seems like the battle it's like already packed in there. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who keeps threatening to write a game set in the Starless Sea universe. Uh, Starless Sea by Aaron oh Lannister. And I'm just like, please, please, if you do this, call me. I want this so bad. It is such a beautiful, magical book. And I would love to just like throw some amazing damaged character in there and just be like, here, find stories and find yourself. It and that is the amazing thing about tabletop role-playing games is that you could play in the Bug Boys universe running around like little bugs or play in like a sweeping Aaron Morgenstern beautiful, magical, high fantasy world. And it's all the same mechanics. It's the same game, but entirely different stories. Mm -hmm. And there's so many other good games coming out now. Like we have barely even scratched the surface. I'm staring at like four other game books and a stack of like card games. It's just, it's so, it's a rabbit hole once you go down it, but there's just so much to do. I love it. Me too. So Whitney, where can I find you on the internet? I'm on the internet at Twitter. I'm at Hey Whitney, or you could go to my website, heywhitney.com. I'm also on Instagram, which is Hey Whitney Writes, because I didn't get in there fast enough. And you can find me at Abby Riceberry on Instagram and Twitter, A B B Y Rice and Berry like the foods. Or if books in Dungeons and Dragons is your specific favorite intersection of things, I'm also on Twitter at Abby the Cleric. I go there and scream about games a lot. Thank you so much for listening today. Thank you for having me. And we close the chapter on another episode. If you liked it, and we hope you do, don't forget to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, we're on them all. If you really like what we do, you can support us by following on Instagram and Twitter at MissShelvedPod. Early access to episodes, as well as lots of other cool perks, are available over at my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash N-E Brinkley. We'll be back with another episode for you in two weeks. Until then, happy reading.